we're going to look at how we can start to create our own custom panels at any object or at any original quad location, right? So basically, we're going to be working with a notion of components. And in this case, uh, we're going to define components as um, a smaller part within a larger collection of parts, right? And when we're using parametric modeling, components are a fundamental aspect of actually being able to execute your parametric model because uh, almost every time your model has to be broken down into smaller parts that are more manageable and then built back up into larger collections of things. Um, so components are one way to do that, uh, particularly when you're uh, working with surfaces and uh, paneling. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, unique panels, but we're going to do it with a, with a, within a very specific kind of type of paneling. And this is going to be uh, one in which all the panels are variable, but only based on the underlying surface that they come from. So um, this is called implicit variation, right? The variation is implied by something else. Um, this is in contrast to explicit variation. And um, this is one way to break down a larger system uh, into smaller parts to gain insight into it. And it allows us to have control at the level of the global system. In this case, the original set of curve profiles. And, but in that, in that case, if we have uh, precise and uh, kind of fluid control over the global system, we're giving up a little bit of control at the local system. Um, but for our purposes for today, that's where we want to investigate. All right, so again, if we have a surface which has a control cage uh, indicated by the purple points, uh, it looks something like this. And if we have a similar surface, but the control cage is modified, right, so that the ISO curves look more like this here, basically stretching the surface towards the middle. If we start to create panels or uh, draw panel uh, representation of panel geometry on those two surfaces, of course the panels are going to be changing. They're going to be variable, but it's only going to be based on the underlying surface. So it's going to be implicitly defined in terms of how those uh, how that variation is achieved. All right. So again, uh, our individual components are going to conform to the behavior and logic of the system it's applied to. So we're going to make panels on our original surface um, that are custom now. Uh, and the parametric behavior is really derived from the system, not the individual component. Right? So we don't have, let's say, smart components where each one of them can change based on a local property, but instead they're going to inherit or their variation is going to be applied by the underlay or the global system they're attached to, in this case, our original surface. All right, so again, um, our panels may stretch or compress based on our surface. Okay, so this is what we're going to do first, is we're going to execute that uh, logic that was based on the question you just asked, which is what happens when something falls out of tolerance and we can't make it out of the quad, so we need to do something else uh, at those particular locations. So let's bounce back over to uh, Grasshopper, and I'm going to save this as my next file, version 1-5. And I'm going to go back to uh, the level of, I'm going to take away the preview so we can just get back to the absolute distance. All right, so we have our four-point surfaces and we have our absolute distance. What we want to do is we want to test this absolute distance to see which panels are above a tolerance and which panels are okay. We can just leave them as quads. So the way we're going to do that is um, we're going to use a slider and a comparison, uh, which is going to fall under the category of a mathematical operator. Right? So the idea here is if the distance um, from the original underlying plane to that fourth point of our quad is smaller than a certain value, that means it's mostly planar and we'll keep it as a quad. If it's bigger, we're going to triangulate it. So we're going to take our absolute distance, and that's going to go into A. We're going to use a slider to define B. And what this does when we're comparing two numerical values is it gives us a collection of 
a collection of trues and falses, right, based on that comparison. And with that true and false, what we're going to do is we're going to set uh, split these collections of quads into two separate lists. The way to go about doing that is we're going to look under the sets, trees, dispatch, sorry, sets, list, dispatch object to dispatch the items in a list into two target lists. So let's drop that in and L asks for the list of filter and P asks for the dispatch pattern. So here's my set of uh, quads. That's going to be my list and my less than uh, result of my less than object is going to be my pattern. All right. And as a way to more easily see the result of this, what goes on to A and B, I'm going to use a, a surface container to connect A and B uh, so that if I turn the preview off here, I can see A separate from B. Now, in this case, my comparison uh, from my slider didn't result in any objects that were greater than this value. So I'm going to slide this down. And as I move my slider closer to zero, you'll see that I increase the number of panels that I'm selecting, right? So if my tolerance value is 0 0.05 units, that's going to be where we, uh, we split the list, right? So these are going to remain quads. And these are going to get triangular. All right, so this is my tolerance value. And this is going to be um, group A. And this is going to be group B. All right. And the objective here is that we said we wanted to uh, we wanted to take group B where it's very curvy and triangulate that. Right. So challenge question. I have a set of quads. I want to get at its parts, right, the vertices. So which object allows me to access the parts of any surface? All right, you got it. BREP components, which is also labeled as explode. So if you go to surface analysis, BREP components, you see it says explode in parentheses. We're going to explode group B. And now we have our four vertices again. So we're going to repeat this same process here. I'm going to take my flip matrix and my explode tree, copy paste, bring them over, and connect them to my vertices. If I do that, this is my uh, BREP components. This is my dispatch. If I explode my tree again, now I have, again, the four vertices from each panel isolated onto four lists. And that would allow me to, from surface freeform, get my four-point surface again and connect these in the corresponding uh, triangles. 0, 1, 2. And if I do a copy of that, 0, 2, 3. Turn all these previews off to just show the last um, geometry, the quads and the two triangular pairs. So now I have um, some surface geometry that is triangulated based on how curvy it is, right? It's too curvy, we have to triangulate so that we can create this out of, uh, of some flat material. Right. In terms of if we're looking at it relative to applications.